Hello and welcome to week five of the summer reading program Tales and Tales program with Miss Heather. I am so glad that you've joined us today and I hope that you enjoy our wonderful stories and so we're going to open with open close them and we're going to do a normal speed and then we're going to do fast and slow so let's see if you guys can keep up okay sometimes I get it a little mixed up you can just keep on going if I do ready get those hands out Open, close them, open, close them, give a little clap, clap, clap. All right, let's do it faster. Open, close them, open, close them, open, close them, give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, close them, open, close them, give a little clap, clap, clap. All right, let's do it slow. Can you be really slow? Open, close them, open, close them. Open, close them, give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, close them, open, close them, put them in your lap. Very good. Story time that has to do with pets. And I'm sure some of you have pets, maybe all of you have pets. My favorite pet was a bunny rabbit, so I thought we would do a little bunny rabbit finger play. It is called Here is a Bunny. And so we're going to do with your two little fingers up. And then you've got your little hole right here. And that bunny is going to wiggle around and listen real good with its, with its ears. So it's here's a little bunny with ears so funny. And here's a little hole in the ground. When a, no when a noise he hears, he pricks up his ears and hops into the hole so round because he's hiding. All right, so let's see if you can do this with me. Are you ready? Here's a little bunny with ears so funny. Here's a little hole in the ground. When a noise he hears, he pricks up his ears and hops into the ground. Very good. What Pet to Get by Emma Dodd Let's get a pet, said Jack one day. I promise I'll look after it. If you like, dear, replied his mother, absent-mindedly. What pet should we get? Jack thought about it for a little while. I think we should get an elephant, he announced. I could ride it to school. Hmm, an elephant would be nice, dear, said Mum. But not very practical. How would we take it on holiday? He's nice enough to carry the purse or backpack. On the roof rack, of course, said Jack. Mm, I don't think so, dear, said Mum. It might squash the car. Hmm. Well, then maybe not an elephant then, said Jack. What about a lion, he said. I'd remember to feed him every day. Hmm, that would be super dear, said Mom. But lions do have very big appetites. Hmm, I think he might be eyeing the postman out the window. And anyways, it would frighten the postman. Hmm, well, I hadn't thought of that, said Jack. Yikes. Jack thought some more. I think we should get a polar bear, he said. He would make a great playmate, especially in winter. A polar bear would be lovely, dear, replied his mother. But I don't think he would like the central heating. Hmm, I suppose not, agreed Jack. I'll, I'll have to think another, think of another. Jack thought some more. What pet to get? Could we get a Tyrannosaurus Rex, he asked. I could take it for walkies. <laughs> that would have been a great idea, replied his mum. But unfortunately, the Tyrannosaurus Rex has been extinct for 65 million years. What a shame, said Jack. Well, then, what about... Hmm, what pet... A giraffe, too tall. A rhino, too wide. A buffalo, too 
too smelly. A crocodile? Too snappy. Look at those teeth. I suppose a shark is out of the question. Yes, dear said Mom. Perhaps you should try something less exotic. <laughs> Early the next morning, Jack announced, I've got it. Let's get a dog. That's an excellent idea, dear, said Mom. We'll get going this morning and choose. A lovely little puppy. Woof. I think his name is Fang. To Bay the Boa by C. Imbeor Kaderna. With soap in hand and water hot, I called the boa to the spot. It's dinner time, I sweetly lied, but not a sound did he reply. I think he's peeking around the corner. As silent as a mouse can be, my grubby boa hid from me, refusing always to be scrubbed. Oh, how he hates that steaming tub. See him underneath that couch? I shook his box of boa chow, and hoped the sound would lure him out. But he refused to show his face outside his secret boa place. I wonder where it was. Fed up with hide-and-seek type games, I called my warning as I came. Prepare for battle if you must. This time I vow it's clean or bust. He does look ready. I looked inside his boa house. My goodness, it's long, and found he wasn't there. I peeked into his favorite room and saw his empty chair. At last, I searched the bedroom where I noticed in a bit that he'd hidden in the toy box, but his tail did not quite fit. Uh-oh for him. Aha! I squealed and grabbed his tail, but holding him just wouldn't last. For a boa has no greater wrath than when he doesn't want a bath. We tossed and tumbled, fell and rolled. He slithered and swayed, but I held my hold. Ooh, he looks like he's going to get dizzy. Then with a twist in a snake-like style, he shook me off into a pile. Back on my feet and chasing fast, I caught him in a tighter grasp. This time I knew I had to win and get him to that tub and in. Then finally with bath in view I gave a shove, but he did too. And tail over feet, boa over limb, we hit the water. First me, then him. Splash! I should have known that I get wet, for every time I battle my pet, this very thing is what I see. My boa ends up scrubbing <laughs> me. Pretty funny story, guys. Well, thank you for joining me for week five of our summer reading program. I hope you enjoyed those stories, and have fun the rest of this day. Bye, and see you next week.